This video is brought to you by Sailrite. This video will show you how to recover your fabric sling chairs with new Pfeiffertex Plus material. These sling chairs have a pocket that you insert the frame hardware into. Basically, these chairs form an envelope and the hardware slips inside. Here you can see the uh, older chair that, which is ripped along the side. We're going to replace it with new Pfeiffertex Plus fabric from Sailrite. First step, take measurements with the old cover installed on the chair. It's important to use a cloth tape measure as Deb is doing here. Bring this right to the very edge and walk it right across. Our chair right measures 21 more. inches along the top. We're also going to check the bottom as well and you should write these measurements here. down on a piece of paper as you go. Just so we have an overall length of it right to the very edge. Before you disassemble the chair to remove the cover, it's always a good idea yeah. to take measurements of the chair as it is now. And again, we're right on the frame, so that's what we're wanting to bring into the cover. And we're coming out right at 42 also. And the next step is measuring for these screw holes. Okay, so the very top. First screw is like one, one and a half. And then you want to walk that completely on the bar and fabric. Okay, so we're at 14 and a half. This one. Chair styles will always vary, however, the procedure should be exactly the same when you're making replacement covers. And then this bar is where the actual cover is, so just measure right along the bar there, rather than the cover. And you'll find 37 and a half. The next one. Be sure to write all those measurements down on a piece of paper. This is just an example, not with the exact measurements we just did. Your sling hardware may be completely different, but basically you just want to disassemble the entire chair and be sure to label or take pictures of how things were so you can easily reassemble the chair. So we want that to be our top one, and we want that one to be number one. We'll continue to remove the hardware until we get down to the bare bones of the chair so that we can remove the two inner rails that help to tension the cover to the chair. Okay, let's take this off. One, two. And like this one, number two. This. Now Deb will go inside the pocket of the chair to remove the hardware inside the envelope cover. Inside. See where these bolts are here. Okay, one side. As Deb continues to disassemble the chair, we're going to look at a different style of chair here. The same sort of principle as construction for the cover, but this one's on a rocker pedestal. But uh, you can see that it's basically assembled in the same sort of fashion. You just have to remember how it was put together. Now that the chair cover has been removed, here's Deb again talking about measuring with the cover installed and with the cover removed. I, I suggest you take it on the chair and off the chair. That way you know if it's actually stretching it and then it might go back into a shorter uh, area. That way you know if you need to add a little bit to it or not. So Deb always wants to confirm her measurements, so she's going to check this uh, old fabric cover to be sure that it's exactly the same measurements as when she measured the cover on the actual frame of the chair. 
Because the cover has been removed from the frame hardware, we have to remember that it may actually be a little bit smaller because it's not stretched out as much. There are a lot of Pfeifertex Plus colors that you can choose from. We're going to make ours out of black and we're going to go ahead and start patterning uh, from the measurements that we took from our chair. Because it's a pocket style or envelope style sling chair, we need to make a front side and a back side. So we're going to have two rectangular shaped patterns here that will have to be sewn together around their perimeter. Deb's just using a Sharpie marker to mark on this Pfeifferdex material. This is a silver colored marker so we can see the actual marks. She's transferring the measurements over to the fabric and then making marks so that she can strike a line uh, along its length and its width to determine the size of the two panels we need. Remember earlier, this envelope uh, sling chair cover has bolts that protrude out the back so you can screw the frame together. Deb's now marking the fabric at those positions. We only need to do this to one of these fabric patterns. The other pattern will be the top side and it won't have any holes through it. So she's referring to her measurements and marking the position right on the fabric. Let's go back to the old cover and take a closer look at these slits where the okay. bolt protrudes. These are like an inch and a half. The slit is and the bolts coming out right at an inch. So we want to come in here at each one of these locations she's going to measure over an inch and a half and an inch where the bolt actually came through the opening on your chair may be slightly different On the two rectangles, the rectangle that has the slits, it's important to note where the top is. It's not nearly as important to label the top side of the front panel because there's no markings on it. Now that we have all those positions labeled on the first panel for the bolts, we need to mark the position for the pocket at the bottom of the chair. And we'll do that on that same back panel. Take that an inch also. Oh. You don't need too big of a pocket here. Deb's just copying exactly what she had on the previous uh, panel that we removed, and she's going to go in one inch. This will actually be folded back to create the pocket to insert the hardware when the uh, two covers are I'm sewn together. That and hem that will be our envelope opening. Okay. Go ahead and cut in here. We'll now use shears to cut each one of these slits that we marked on the back panel and also to cut the two rectangles out. There's no reason to use a hot knife. Pfeiffertex Plus material does not unravel much at all. It's now time to start sewing the two rectangles together to form our envelope pocket. Okay. We have, this is the back, so it will be flipped over and then this top will be put on. Before we do that, we want to take this back and where we made our cut, this one. I'm going to thumbnail that down. This is the back panel, and this is the opening where we will insert the hardware. We're just going to sew that we'll be using the Sayerite Big and Tall Sewing Machine and also Tanara Thread. Tanara Thread is a lifetime guaranteed thread. The Big and Tall Sewing Machine is really not necessary for sewing through Pfeiffer Tex Plus material. A good home sewing machine can sew through this quite sufficiently well. It's also not necessary to use Tanara Thread. A polyester V69 for a home sewing machine is great, or a polyester V92 for a heavy duty machine is also great to use with this Viper so Text Plus front material. And back. We are going to put those together. So. 
we're going to base these panels together using seam stick. That way nothing moves when we take it to the sewing machine and sew. If you don't have double-sided tape, you may want to staple it in place prior to taking it to the sewing machine and sewing around the perimeter. Double-sided tape is highly recommended. Make sure you apply this double-sided tape as close to the edge as possible. We will be putting a binding around the entire perimeter of this envelope uh, sling cover, but uh, we don't want the double-sided tape to really show, so we're going to put it very close to that edge. And on the side that we put our hem on, we'll make sure these are stuck down too. Helps hold it straighter. Because I don't want them to cross here where the cutout is. Once the double sided tape is applied, just peel back the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then carefully baste the top panel to the back panel, ensuring that the sides are as even as possible. If they're not totally even, we can trim them up with scissors when we're done basting them together or even sewing them together. As Deb bases these panels together, we're going to fast forward through this uh, section here to give you an overall uh, view of how it's done. Basically, peel back the paper, reveal the glue, and baste it down. And now that the two sides are basted together, we'll check to make sure the edges are even. If they're not, we'll trim them with scissors because we are going to apply a binding tape around it, and it needs to be flush edges for that to be applied appropriately so that we cover our first stitch. Alright, we're now ready to sew around the perimeter. We'll use the Sayerite Big and Tall sewing machine and we're going to do a straight stitch. We are using Tanara thread which never rots, however you can sew this nicely with a V92 polyester if you have a heavy duty sewing machine. If you have a home sewing machine, you can use V69 polyester thread. It's important to sew as close to the edge as possible. There will be a binding that will be put around the entire perimeter and we want to try to cover this stitch. You'll notice that when Deb reaches the corner, she leaves her needle buried in the material, lifts her foot, pivots on the needle, lowers the foot and continues to sew. That's one great way to make a 90 degree turn. And at the top where the opening is, notice we're not sewing across that because there's nothing really to sew. We want to leave that opening open so we can insert the hardware. We'll be using the Sunbrella Centerfold Binding. This is a binding that's kind of woven and it folds nicely in the middle. So, we're going to do the centerfold here. And then we'll go all the way around, come back here. And since we have this opening, when we come around with our binding, it'll just go right down over the raw edge here and miss the hem completely. Deb will start the centerfold binding kind of in the middle of the uh, chair cover. She's going to fold it around the edge, and you'll notice it folds fairly nicely right in the center because this is a centerfold binding and that she's going to sew it with the Sayerite Big and Tall sewing machine using that Tanara thread. She's going to sew a straight stitch very close to the raw edge of the binding but not too far into the raw edge. Just enough to keep the binding in place and the stitch far enough inside the edge of the fabric that it, the binding won't come off easily. She'll sew around the entire perimeter. Notice that while she's sewing she's working about a foot and a half away from the needle to ensure that the binding is being folded appropriately. Watch as Deb gets here to the corner, she'll stop and then she'll make a bend in the, in the uh, binding and then turn it over on the bottom side to make that uh, 45 degree bend in the binding to make the uh, 90 degree turn. She buries her needle in the corner, lifts her foot, rolls the fabric around, then she'll lower her foot and continue sewing. It's a great way to make a 90 degree turn with the centerfold binding. If you were using the Sumbrella Marine Grade, which is basically a heavier binding, you wouldn't be able to do this at the corner. You'd have to basically cut the binding 
then start the binding again at your 90 degree corner. But with a centerfold binding, it's no problem. One of the reasons we have such great slow speed control is because we're using the MCSCR power system with this uh, Sayerite big and tall sewing machine. It's phenomenal. Hopefully you can see this in the video. Unfortunately the black color is making it kind of difficult. Okay, you pull this up tight. Keep that at the edge. Bring this down. Fold that back. Should make you a corner. Okay, and do the same here, pull it straight forward, hold it at that flat edge, bring that up, should make you a corner. Okay. And you just walk up to that point, bury your needle in that corner, you lift your foot and turn, I'm holding this underneath. Feel your edge at the edge of your binding. And here we're coming to the end with the opening, and you notice how Deb continues to sew that binding on right over the top of the opening. So just keep going until you get to where the two sides meet. You want to cut off enough to where you got enough to fold it over so that you've got a finished fold edge. And just take this, fold it back against itself. Fold it up here. Fold it over. To it. We'll do a little bit of reversing here, and that completes sewing on the Sumbrella Centerfold Binding from Sayorite. Now all we need to do is put the chair hardware back together again using our new cover. I know this chair isn't exactly the same as the one we originally tore apart, but we had several chairs to do and we wanted to show you how to put a different alternate style chair together. No matter what the style, the process is exactly the same. Put it together the exact same way you tore it apart. We're going to speed the film up a little bit or fast forward through a lot of this portion. We want to show you all the steps, but it's not necessary to show you them in detail. Once the cover is made, it's just a matter of putting the hardware back together. All right, that's all there is to it. Using Pfeiffer Tex Plus material and supplies from Sayerite, your chair should now be complete. We hope you enjoy many, many years of satisfaction and relaxation in your sling chair. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your support.